Thanks, Marla. And thanks, everyone who's come here today. I know that um, it's a beautiful day outside. So to come and sit inside and listen to us talk about teacher preparation, you must really care about improving our education system. So thank you for, for making that time. And thank you, Marla. Thank you, Leo. Thank you to the Schenker Institute, not only for inviting me here today, but actually from the inception of Deans for Impact actually being um, friendly and being willing to sort of bridge a divide that I think has unfortunately um, infected our education discourse and it made um, sometimes conversations hard to have and become very polarized. So at Deans for Impact, we talk very deliberately about being a third way organization and wanting to communicate outside of that toxicity. Um, and one of the things that um, happened very early on in Deans for Impact was uh, the Schenker Institute actually ran a uh, a op opinion piece that we had co-authored about the need to prepare effective teachers of color. Um, and I think for us in our earliest days to be able to talk about that and to have um, a relationship with Schenker Institute doesn't mean we'll always agree on everything, but I think it speaks to the, the third way that we are trying to chart forward. Um, and I'll talk a little bit more about what that means. I also want to thank, um, we have, they'll probably be embarrassed I'm about to do this, but we actually have an active and a founding member of Deans for Impact in the audience today. So Dr. Cassandra Herring, uh, who is the Dean of Hampton University and HBCU in Virginia. I like to call on her when she's eating. And, <laughs> and uh, Dr. David Steiner, who was the Dean uh, when he originally helped us create Deans for Impact at Hunter College in New York, and who's now with Johns Hopkins University. Um, and in some ways, having both of them here sort of reflects part of what Deans for Impact is trying to do, which is to really reflect the diversity of teacher preparation in the United States. So we have at the moment 22 different deans from around the country leading very different institutions. The former dean of Johns Hopkins was a member. He's just left to become a president of another university. Obviously, Dr. Herring at an HBCU. We have Frank Hernandez, who leads at the moment the University of Texas Permian Basin, which is a Hispanic-serving institution in West Texas. And then we have major research universities like the University of Virginia, Arizona State, USC, and also small regionals or smaller regionals like Leslie University in Boston. And so what we have really deliberately tried to do is avoid some of the silos that can happen um, within education generally, but typically uh, within teacher preparation where people come with solutions that they think can apply to this very complex, very diverse field, and they come with that one-size-fits-all mandate perhaps, and we, we don't want to be in that space. But on the other hand, we do, we do have some principles that we agree to. And I think to a person, if we had the active members of Deans for Impact sitting in this room, um, to be a little bit controversial right out of the gate, they would disagree with the characterization that getting data about outcomes is a blame and shame game. I think what's motivated many of the people who have signed up and have been part of Deans for Impact is a desire to actually get that information about how the teachers they've prepared are performing once they've left the institution that prepared them. And the reality is, and if you were to pick up, we have copies of it outside, if you were to pick up copies of our policy brief and look at the appendix, we've done an analysis on our own membership of the programs they lead. And the chaos part of our From Chaos to Coherence is that the information that our members, our deans, are able to get is incredibly spotty or non-existent. And so they have very little insight as to whether anything that we're doing as part of teacher preparation is actually preparing teachers when they start their careers and are beginning to teach. Is it leading to them being lifelong learners and able to improve over time? That data simply does not exist at present. And I think if the members were sitting here in the room, they would also agree with the statement I'm about to make, which is that they are aghast at the failure of the field to address that issue on its own. And, and what they have felt is that the conversation too often has been reactive. It has been, well, yes, we need to do better on gathering that data, but not that solution, not that regulation that would provide that data. The can has been kicked down the road too long. And so even though we agree with some of the folks sitting up here that the regulations as currently proposed are imperfect, all regulations in history are imperfect, we as a group want to change the conversation and instead of being a voice saying no, provide some solutions, come to the table, figure out ways in which you can work with what the federal government is trying to do with states to figure out what works to get the data that programs need and so and at least within our membership so desperately want in order to figure out how their graduates are doing and what can they do better and marla you asked the question one of your your guiding questions is so what level of that data should be it's a really um, provocative and important question because 
Um, for us, and what Deans for Impact as an organization is trying to do, is lift capacity, right? So in order to do that, you need to get genuine, comparable, actionable data in relatively real time in order to make decisions about what's working within your program and what isn't. And right now, with rare exception, we have almost no insight into that. And so what we're doing is we're behaving in a completely ad hoc and unscientific manner. And that doesn't mean that everything is bad. Okay, in some circumstances, and I can say this with some insight now because we've been going and visiting all of the programs led by our member deans and spending multiple days on site observing them. We see incredible strength in some areas, but within the same program, we will see deep weaknesses. Same program, same institution, viewed from sort of the, a bird's eye view, we will see a, an elementary education program that is killing it. And then you walk across the hallway and you look at the future teachers who are going to be teaching in secondary and high school, they're not ready. They're not ready. And so what will happen is those teachers will be sent out and some of them will figure it out. And if any of you sitting in this room are a teacher, maybe that's what you had to do, depending on where you were prepared, right? But some won't, which will not only be terrible for them, it'll have dramatic consequences for the kids who happen to be stuck in that classroom. <coughs> So what Deans for Impact is trying to do, and this is the back half of the, from the chaos to the coherence, whether in teacher preparation or in broader issues in life, Marla, right. is to say, like, can we develop an agenda where we can work with states who want to figure out how to get that data into the hands of the people who are in the position to make changes to their programs? Can we find ways in which we can create some experiments, create some new models, some new processes that will allow us to, for the first time, take the notion of connecting the input of preparing a teacher to the outcome of their effectiveness in the classroom? And the interesting thing about that is, it's like, you know, to the extent individual teachers have felt over the last, call it 10, 15 years, um, an increasing amount of accountability and weight being placed on their individual shoulders. Our group, at least, is holding their arms saying, let's transfer some of that. Let's look at where, what's happening prior to when they've gone into the classroom and put the onus on, at least in part, the institutes that prepare those teachers to give them the skills and knowledge and tools necessary so that they don't go into the classroom and are suddenly held accountable when they haven't been properly prepared in the first place. And so that's why I continue to have these fantasies of a grand bargain where educator preparation can be the place where the so-called reform community and the so-called traditional community, both of which are neither reform nor traditionalist when you really start to break down the stereotype, but actually have a conversation about how can we sync up these two different spaces and have a much more not, I mean, look, I'm sorry, like, we need to stop attacking data, we need to stop attacking evidence, we need to stop taking the position that we don't need that information, but let's have a conversation about how to get the information that will be valuable, useful, accurate, meaningful, empirically defensible, and use that to start thinking about how to improve the performance of the entire system. That's what the members of Deans for Impact are animated by. That ultimately is our policy agenda. It's remarkable to me, I mean, I'm not naive, but it's remarkable to me that it's that controversial, you know, because it's, it, it just seems to me that when you look at the history of other professional education systems in the United States, this is what they've done to varying degrees of success, but they have embraced that. And what's, what's really upsetting to me and disappointing to me is that we're actually at an interesting moment where, in general, higher education is being asked to demonstrate its impact. We are no longer content to simply say, we hope that these institutions are making use of public resources in ways that are useful. We're actually asking them to demonstrate that impact. Turns out that's actually really hard to do. That's not an easy question to answer. Ironically, Colleges of education and programs that prepare teachers are actually uniquely situated to have insight into that. Because imperfect though the data is, we can actually start to figure out, so what, so what was the impact on student learning of the teachers that you prepared at your institution? That's the outcome, that's the impact. And you can trace that back to program features. We could actually develop, if we took this seriously, an incredibly robust science of teacher preparation and frankly, teaching overall. And yet, the very people who should be leading that movement are fighting it. They're fighting it. So this is, what's, this is what animates us, is to sort of say, let's change that conversation. Let's find the leaders within teacher preparation who are interested in moving that agenda forward, and let's see if we can create a broad national effort within states to actually make that the reality so that we can actually get the information that they need 
to improve the performance of their programs.